2024 U Triple S A bats, bro. Let's do this. Yo, this is about to be the longest video you've ever watched uh, U Triple S A bats for 2024. But we're terrible at making YouTube videos, so we're just gonna make we're gonna make one. All right, it's gonna be long. Here's the trick: look in the chapter description in the video. You can jump around to all the different things that we do. We're just gonna put them all there. Now, look, if I were you, I would maybe just drop that bad boy on two times speed. Watch the whole thing. Front to end, I think you'll know everything about our thinking for 2024. You triple SA bats. These are all drop tens. We're gonna do some blind bat testing. That's right, we'll wrap the bat in black and uh, we'll have hitters hit without knowing what's going on. We'll get exit speeds, we'll get swing weights, we'll get barrel sizes, we'll get compression, we'll categorize them by by price and by type and by feel. And then we'll get some of that blind feedback and then some overall winners you'll see. And uh, we think it's gonna be a, a useful way for you to go about buying a 2024 U-Triple-S-A bat. We have the vast majority of U-Triple-S-A bats here. Sometimes they come out with them late or we don't have them all, but man, we have, I feel like we have so many and that's what, that's what we're gonna do. So uh, sit back, like I said, pop that bad boy on two times speed and let's, uh, let's get rocking. So sometimes we get accused of uh, of measuring weird things, and we and we don't disagree. But as we as we often like to say, it's not it's not us that's saying the bat is different. It's the industry that they're the ones saying, "Hey, my, our bat is different," and and we know they're saying their bat is different because they're trying to say their bat is better. As we've said in other places, just look look at the next video you're about to watch on YouTube. If you if you were to click the next button or look over in the sidebar at all the different videos, I, I would bet ninety plus percent of those videos are comparing one bat to the other. We have accepted this notion that bats are different and therefore if a bat is different, it can be better. But so, so our question is just real simple, which is how is it different? If it's, if it's, if it's better, it's gotta be different. And so that's a long way, well, maybe not too long, but of saying we measure weird things. So sometimes we measure like we are doing right here. We measure the distance of the actual usable part of the bat. That is we take from right underneath this. So we hang it on that black thing back there. And then we hang a tape measure that you can see back here, right? And then that tape measure comes down and, you, and we'll show you these pictures here. We'll show you exactly how far the actual usable part of the bat is. That is to say the distance from right there to the distance to about right there, what is the usable part of the bat? And you will find, surprisingly, or maybe not that surprisingly, that when a company says a bat is 30 inches, what that actually measures is sort of an MLB standard, which is the wood bat, which is from the top of the knob to the end of the end cap. Well, in actual practice though, those can be designed differently. Look, for example, how uh, curved a DeMarini Zoa is, for example. Let me grab you a bat like like the bone saber. Look how flat the bone saber is, right? There's, there is a ton of usable barrel to the end of this where here, not, there, there's less, okay? And same... Same with a knob, right? And so this, this is where the bone saber, as an example, same with an axe bat kind of throws this whole thing off. But this is a sort of a usable part of the barrel, right? We could we could bring this barrel back and hold it back here, where you can't really do that with the De Marini. So I will simply point out in our measurements, when you see a De Marini in there, or excuse me, when you see the bone saber in there, know that it kind of throws this this sort of measurement off. But for most other bats where there's more of a traditional knob, there is a sort of defined usable part of the bat that goes from underneath that knob to basically about where the end cap tends to end. Some of them are a little shaped a little differently. And so that's what we're measuring. Why is that a weird thing to measure? Is that like the number one thing on your list uh, in terms of the bat you should buy? I, I can't imagine it could ever be, but but that's for you to decide, not for us to decide. All we can do is just measure the, the length of the bat because again, the companies, the industry is assuming everything is different. So, well, if we can, if, if something is different, we should be able to measure a difference and that's what we're doing here. So uh, these are the pictures that you're seeing as we're, as we're talking about the different sizes of these bats from, from right here. Last comment, because I'm showing you the bone saber. The bone saber, it, we only have a 29 inch, not a 30 inch, which is lame, but this, this is our life, right? Col trying to collect all these bats, uh, buy these bats from places, we get them all in and, and they come out at different times. And then when it comes time to make the video and the holiday season is upon us, we're sort of stuck in this moment. Like, am I gonna wait another four days for another bat, another bat? So 
This is the 29 inch bone saver. So don't say, oh wait, it's, it's an inch shorter. No, actually add an inch to that usable part of the barrel and that's it. But again, the bone saver throws everything off anyways because it has that weird handle. So I don't know that that's, this is a super, not weird, just different. Oh, maybe weird, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know that that's, that's as useful as a measurement in a bat like the bone saver as it is when you compare about like the Icon and the Meta, for example. In terms of usable barrel, so again, that's from right below the knob all the way down to kind of where the end cap finishes, or and not the, where the barrel finishes, that we, we measured that. And we only found a, a half inch difference between the longest bat, well, we, the longest usable bat, we should say. These again are all 30 inch bats. The, between the Rawlings Icon all the way down here to the CF. The CF tends to be short. Demer and e, uh, even in BB Core, their bats just tend to be a little shorter. They have that rounded end cap that they count and the end sort of a, the knob they count. And so it just ends up making their bat shorter. So in any case, these 30 inch bats, the CF only has about a, a, a 29 inches of usable bat, meaning that that between the end cap and the knob, it takes off basically an inch of usable bat. Whereas a bat like the Icon, which has that kind of thinner knob and a pretty flat end cap down here, uh, is only about 29 and a half inches. So you get about a half inch more bat out of it. Again, does that change your decision? I'm not, I'm not sure if it changes your decision, but we're trying to measure differences and this is one way we can measure differences. Notice that the ax bats are down here at the end. Uh, this sort of gets thrown out the window when you start talking about ax and with bone saver bats because their handles are just different and so it's hard to find, well, where is the bottom of that handle? They do tend to have some rounded end cap, but they also have this sort of one-sided hitting issue too where their bat, their, the end cap is extended. And so that just sort of throws off the measurement. So don't, don't think so much about those ones in terms of how these bats line up with each other in terms of longest to shortest, but the ones that are more traditionally shaped, we go from the CF as the shortest all the way up to about like the Icon. Notice about like Marucci's uh, Cat X Banto or Cat X. It just has that really thick knob because it uses that sting dampening thing in there. So you throw in that, although it has a decently flat end cap, but it just makes it shorter. So there you go. Um, enough difference for you to make a decision? Not sure, but that's not my decision. So price is the category that most people pay attention to simply because, well, that just seems to be the most obvious. It's like the easiest way to, to, to sort online. It's also the easiest way for you to sort of see the difference, right? And the price is sort of, in, it's implicit in that, that the company saying, our bat is this much better. If it, it, Go watch our BB Core video. We have like a 10 minute, if you're really into price, okay? Go, we have this like rant and we're not going to do it here, but but about price. Just Just know this much. Price has nothing to do with the cost of this stuff. It, it, does, it has nothing to do with that, okay? It has. It just has how much to do with how much you're willing to pay. That's it. So the price of, of a product in the market is what people will pay for it. And they've created this sort of atmosphere, they, by the industry, they've created this, this industry or this market where two-piece composite bats happen to cost the most and alloy bats happen to cost the least. And in production, are those different? Sure. But but it's, we're not talking about the difference between a bat that's down here that's, you know, $199 and a bat that's up here like $420. It's not $200 more to produce this bat than it is to produce this bat, especially at scale, right? If you're producing five of them, okay, maybe, but you're not. You're producing 5,000 or 10,000 of them. So my, my point is simply this. People love to think about price as differences. A lot of people, though, don't don't care. Like a lot of people play baseball. They're like, just give me the best. And it's the company that's saying, well, we're the best because we're the most expensive. But that is 100 percent. It's just not it just doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be accurate. But, but in any case, this is the category by price. So if you're trying to think about what bats fit in the same, this is my budget. Well, this little section of the video might be helpful. So let me put the camera around and I will show you the different sections in price. So this goes from right, obviously, from down here. This is the most expensive bat for 2024, USSA, is the Cat X Vanta, which is something like $420, which we find to be, honestly, a little bit insane, especially compare that to a bat like the Hype Fire. These bats here, these three are all $350. What a coup, by the way. We think that Easton and Rawlings, obviously the same company, they're going to match that CF, that 2023 CF matchup, I think, as well as they can. We'll talk more about that when we do some of our hitting, but these bats right here, 350 for these, everything else sort of goes, I mean, I mean imagine that the Cat X Connect, which they don't have an Avanta version just yet this year, so this guy here, they don't have a Vanta version 2024, they might come out with one later, we don't know, maybe inventory is too high on this guy, but they didn't make this one, at least so far, in the black version that, that, that we could find, maybe, maybe we're wrong about that, maybe we, 
Anyways, what, whatever. This is 370 for a two-piece uh, hybrid bat versus 350 for these two-piece composites. I, I don't understand what the folks at marketing uh, in Marucci Marketing were thinking when they priced that out, realizing these bats were not that. But, but in any case, there you go. The Zoa, the Avenge, these bats are actually $400 now. Then you work down here to the left and you sort of have your, your alloy bats. Look at that Easton uh, Maxim from 2022. Not sure they have, they're gonna produce this bat again, but that 2022, what's that bat run? Like 300 bucks? Anyways, 299. Harder to find new, unfortunately, but we do love that bat. The Victus Lev 3 is like a $300 bat as well. And then you get down to bats like the Bone Saber and the Atlas and the Strato. And those are something like, if I remember right, I think it's like 250. You, you obviously can go look this stuff up, but I think it's 270 for the Bone Saber, then 250 for the, the Axe Strato, and 250 for the, for the Atlas. Then you have what might be categorized as cheaper bats, but you have a String King, an F5, which is like 120, and then that War Stick uh, Warhawk, which I think is like uh, 170 or 199, something like that. So again, people love to think about bats by price. So there they are. If you're, if you're limited by a certain budget, if you want to spend a certain amount, this is your this is kind of how you need to think about bats. So, you know, take out the top half or what, whatever it might be. The, the question, of course, is does more money get me more bat? Uh, my answer is, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that as an example, the Cat X uh, Vanta, this $420 bat could ever be that much better than a $350 Rawlings Icon, or really, I mean, the Hype Fire, which is, is clearly a bat that people are talking a lot about, and you know, watch our hitting, and you'll, you'll see more about that. But I, I think uh, it's really hard to justify the $400 price point when you can find bats that are 300 to 350 that I think are legit. But again, this is travel baseball. You guys spent $100 on gas to practice yesterday. Uh, why, why are we freaking out about $100 more and by the way, that's industry thinking. The industry loves that idea, right? We've talked about this in other places. Again, bats will continue to go up in price because the industry realizes that you already spend thousands and thousands of dollars in your travel ball experience. So the one unit that you have in your bag that actually makes it all possible, which is your bat, why isn't more of that captured there versus at the concession stand or at the gas station or at the jersey shop or whatever the thousands and thousands of dollars we're spending as travel ball parents? It's it's this crazy thing, right? It's the Little League's arms race and prices keep going up. We're not saying spend more money, but we are saying there is a lot of uh, priced inelasticity, I think is the word we, you, you might want to use, that, that price goes up, demand kind of still stays the same, and companies are doing a really good job of marching, ever marching that price up to $1,000 bats, which I think we'll see by the end of the decade. In any case, uh, this is your price do we buy on price? Absolutely not. But I do want to get it out of your head that just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it's better. 100%. That is not. That is not true at all. All it means is that people will pay it, and that is what the industry is convincing you of. So don't don't hesitate on a bat down here if you feel like it's the right fit for you and the right bat that you want. I mean that String King, that Warhawk, that F5, the Atlas, the Bone Saber, the Strato, the Victus Lev 3, the Maxim, all those bats sort of sub 300 bucks. They're honestly great, great bats for the right kind of hitter if that's the kind of bat that you want. So anyways, hopefully you have confidence in that. And that's, that's the point I'm, I guess I'm trying to make. As we've said a thousand times over, and you can probably check our website to hear this a, a thousand times more, swing weight is the single most important factor in determining the right bat for who you are, who, uh, who, who's, who's playing. Uh, swing weight is not the balance point, all right? It's not the load on the bat, where, where the balance point is. It's not the total weight of the bat. Swing weight is the difficulty that it requires to swing a bat. That is the power that it takes, the strength it takes to make a bat rotate around a certain pivot. I'm trying to show you that, geez. It, it to rotate around a certain pivot. That, that's the strength that it uh, requires. The industry measures this from six inches from the knob. So if this is a, a tiny bat, but if this is a real bat, the six inches would be like, you know, right there, right? How much weight does it take? to spin around this part of the knob. Now, it turns out that most bats, actually, you don't spin them around the six inch part of the knob when you swing. The truth is you probably, that the pivot point of your bat when you swing, even for somebody who's not very good, actually is like right here. It's actually off the barrel because the way that they swing, if you think about a swing, it like, it almost like rotates around this sort of point off there. So six inches isn't the best place to measure swing weight. However, that's the way the industry does it. And it's not linear, meaning that as you change it, it doesn't stay the same order. So if I were to put these bats in order in swing weight, which I will do here in a moment, but if I were to put them in order, this is at the six inch mark. If I were to change that to say like the negative one mark or whatever it might be, 
the order would not be the same, roughly speaking. They'd, they'd be about the same, but not exactly the same. But in any case, we have to measure swing weight somehow, and that's what we're gonna do with you triple SA bats. We'll show you the process. You have to get a thing called the pendulum period, so we measure how long it takes the bat to sort of rotate back and forth, how heavy the bat is, as well as the actual balance point on the bat. So we're gonna get that for 2024 U triple SA bats right here and put them in order and show you the lightest to the heaviest swinging bat. Uh, all of these are 30 inch bats. So um, there you go, here we go. One thing that's fun to do, or at least to show people, although it's not directly useful, and we'll explain that here, is actually weigh the bats. Some years ago, maybe like two or three, there, there's massive hullabaloo about the total weight of the bat and the actual weight of the bat. That is to say the stated weight of this bat is a 3020, but if we weigh this bat, this one specifically weighs 21 ounces. If you have this same bat at home, go grab a kitchen scale and put it on there. I'd be shocked to find out it also weighed 21 ounces, but I would bet money it weighs more than 20 ounces. That is to say there's variability in each particular bat that Easton makes, and this is like a high-end brand. It has good quality control, but every bat you get, you weigh it, it will weigh a little bit more than the actual uh, number that's stated on the bat. And that's what all these lawsuits were about some years ago, and maybe they're still ongoing, I have no idea, that people were saying, we're buying a 3020, but they're actually selling me a 3021, and therefore it's harder to swing. Well, the truth is it has almost... Well, I shouldn't say nothing, but but the, the, the total weight of the bat actually isn't correlated with how hard it, well, no, that's not true. It is correlated, but it's not it's not directly linear like you would imagine. And, and what I mean by that is just because this bat weighs 21 ounces, if you were to add weight right here in the handle, it actually makes the bat easier to swing. So, so I could make this bat a 23 ounce bat and make it easier to swing than this 21 ounce, 21 ounce bat. And that's simply by putting weight here in the handle. Because you, I mean, you, you can imagine that, right? As you start, as you swing things, if you have this more, this leverage around this part we're trying to swing, well then it creates this sort of hammer effect where we put weight towards the hand and it makes the bat easier to swing. So total weight, although it is, a, it is, it is one of the metrics we use to measure swing weight, it is not swing weight, it's not the same. That said, it's still fun to measure it and show you, and that's what we're gonna do now is measure the total weight of these. And we use that total weight as long as well as the pendulum period and the balance point to find out the actual weight, uh, the actual swing weight of the bat. Now, what's slightly interesting is that you can get the, the total weight and the balance point at the same exact time. And you do that by taking two scales, two kitchen scales, and you put one at six inches and one at 24 inches, and you rest the bat on there. And you take this number, ready? And you multiply it by six. And you take this number and you multiply it by 24. And then you add those two numbers up and you divide it by the total weight. And that will give you an inch number that will actually give you the balance point of the bat. So with one measurement, we can find the total weight of the bat and the balance point of the bat, which is super helpful because you need both of those things to measure swing weight. You also see this thing called pendulum period, which we will measure. And you can see those kinds of things going on on the screen right now that will show you the total weight. But ultimately that's useful because it will get us the swing weight of the bat. And that's the thing that ultimately is useful for parents and for players saying, I know the bat weighs 22 ounces or 29 ounces. I don't care. What I actually care about is how difficult is it? How difficult is it to swing the bat? And that's the question you should have. And that's what swing weight gets us. And that's what this measurement gets us in terms of how heavy the bat is at the six inch mark and at the 24 inch mark. So there you go. Now, now you know. From lightest to heaviest 2024 U-Triple-S-A bats, you have a bat like the Bone Saber, Hype Fire, the CF, this is 23 or what is that, 22? The Victus Lev 3, Marucci Cadex Vanta, uh, again, this is the white version, but the black version is exactly the same. Here's the Cadex Connect, or excuse me, composite version. Vanta, same as the white version, but that's where it lands. This is a 2022 Easton Maxim. You have about like the Zoa, the Warhawk, the Icon, the Atlas, the Meta, the Avenge Pro, the String King, the Cadex Connect. These two we would consider actually kind of heavy bats in the Strato and the F5. Again, to break that down, these are kind of our heavier bats, those, those, those last two from this Cadex Connect all the way down to about that Warhawk. We would put those sort of in the middle class of swing weights. And then from bats like the Zoa all the way down to the Bone Saber, we would put as what we would call the light swinging bats or really, really, really balanced as some people like to refer to them as. So that's your 2024 U-Triple-S-A swing weight order.
This is from lightest down here all the way up to the heaviest. That would be the Marucci F5, all the way to two bats like the Bone Saver and the Hype Fire. These are drop tens. The range on these bats is about 15%, which is considerable. You, you could tell the difference if you were just to pick these bats up and, and to shake them. When you get within about five, six, seven percent, it all kind of feels the same. We would put all the way up here to the Zoa. We would put this from like Zoa all the way down to the Hype Fire Bone Saver. We would put these in the same category of light swinging. It's only it's only like 3% difference between these bats. And that's probably that standard error that we're talking about. Just manufacturer tolerance is probably right in here. We would definitely put these bats here all the way up to the Cadex Connect as sort of, you know, what we like to call balance, which in our brain, balance is like the ones in the middle. You have light, you have balanced, you have heavy, but people sometimes say, I want the most balanced. And I'm like, does the most balanced mean the one that's most in the middle or does it mean the most light? I think what people usually say by balance is they mean light. Just know that's not what we often say. When we say balance, we're thinking, yeah, it's kind of the guy in the middle. It's, it's balanced, right? It's like in the middle, whatever. In any case, we would call these ones right here from the Cadex Connect all the way down to the Warhawk, kind of a, a mid-load, if you will. And then we put bats like the Strato and the F5 definitely in the heavier class. Interestingly, the Icon and the, the Hype Fire, we would put in different categories. They're about 6%, 7% difference um, in, in actual swing weight, which... Again, we, we think that's a significant difference. Now, is that just some manufacturer tolerance? I hope not. I hope they're actually able to dial it in better than that. I know for a fact that our swing weights are great. We measure them just like the industry. In fact, the equipment we got was from the industry and we know how to do it. So, so if you're new to buying you SSA bats and this kind of freaks you out because it's about heavy and light, just know of all the things we talk about in this video, other than maybe actual feel and maybe a little bit of exit speeds, we would say swing, weight, swing weights matter. If you want a light swinging bat, stay on this side of the aisle. If you're, if you're okay with a little bit of weight or you're maybe at a 30 and you're thinking maybe I need to go to that drop eight or maybe you're 30 and you wanna to go to that 31, something like that, maybe instead of sizing up an inch, maybe we can look at getting a heavier bat, right? And, that, and that's sort of what we think is super, super useful. At the end of the day, if the kid can't swing it well, he won't hit the ball. And if he can't hit the ball, he will hate and quit baseball. So to give him the best chance of liking it and having a good experience, we would say stay down here if you, if you don't know, if you need a light swing. This is where we would generally stay. Uh, I don't know where you want to draw your line, but you know, something, something like that, which you can see in the screen. If you want to get a little crazier, then maybe add some bats that are down here a little bit. So there you go. For, for what it's worth, that's. Another thing that we can measure, uh, should we measure it? I, I don't know. I guess it's maybe, is it useful to you? Is actual barrel size. That is to say, uh, we put a ring around the barrel, a two, two and five eighths ring, and we find out how quickly does that barrel get to two and five eighths? How long is it compared to that other bats? Uh, do we think barrel size is the most important thing? Uh, like a lot of these things we measure, not really. Uh, we, we think it maybe it's all of the things being equal, we would take a barrel that was bigger over one that was not bigger. That seems to make sense. We've heard a lot of companies tell us, well, barrel size doesn't matter. And we'll just go back to the point that maybe we make too often in this video and elsewhere is that, well, I'm not the one saying that your bat is different. You're the one saying your bat is different. So if your bat is in fact different, how is it different? And one way we can measure that difference is, is in barrel size. And there's definitely measurable differences between barrel sizes between different brands and different bats. And is that useful information? Again, like I said, if all the things were equal, we would take a barrel that was bigger over one that was smaller. No doubt about it, especially with kids who are just trying to trying to make contact or trying to put the ball in play. Is this my number one factor? Probably not, but is it useful? Absolutely. So you can see here, this is how we did it. Uh, we just measured these uh, bats up against the wall, put a little ruler there, put that thing, and then we just take picture over picture. And you'll see those here on the screen in terms of how we measure 2024 and 23 USSA bat barrel sizes. Um, here you go. In terms of the categories by barrel size, so this is the measurement. We just put them kind, kind of in order. So uh, these are the ones that have, I think, over a 10-inch barrel, 9-inch barrel. These are like your 8 and 7. These are your 6, and these are your 5-inch barrels, basically. And they are in order because, you know, maybe there's like a half or quarter-inch difference. But this, the bats like the Zoa and the, the old Maxim and the old CF have absolutely massive barrels. Icon and the Hype Fire also have massive barrels, although again, maybe a little bit lower down here, and you can almost kind of see that in the video, but they are a little bit smaller than these, these guys, but not, not again, not by a ton. Huge chunk of bats right here, also massive barrels. Crazy to us that the Atlas, which is an alloy barrel, does such a good job of being so absolutely massive. So uh, Slugger's done a really good job of getting an alloy barrel to have a huge barrel. An alloy barrel to be a huge one most of the time as all these bats here are, are composite 
And then you bounce, bounce down here into your alloy stuff where you have about like the Lev 3 and the String King are generally small. That's like the Cat X, the Vanta. This is um, the, the Connect version, which is the same barrel basically, just has a different handle than right this bat. So, so same barrel, so same, same kind of size. And then the Strato are kind of there. So that's, if barrel size is your, is your jam, then that's sort of what you're looking at from right to left on your screen from biggest to smallest. Another, what we think super useful way to think about bats is the type of bat that it is. So for example, this section of bats right here for 2024 USSA bats and 23, some bats in here. Uh, these are two piece composites. Down here you have single piece alloy bats. This bat here is a hybrid. This bat here is a, a single piece composite. And by hybrid, of course, we mean it takes the composite handle basically from its bat that it's made here and its alloy barrel from over here and it puts it on the same bat and makes a hybrid. This is what we find fascinating about this sort of commentary. I think most people would believe that the, the best USSA and best USA bat for most hitters is a two-piece composite bat. It's, that would be one, one of these ones. Now, it doesn't mean for you. I'm just saying as a general rule, we're really, as an industry, really quick to say, oh yeah, these are, these are clearly the best ones. But then we get into BB Core, and this may, might be more BB Core comment than a USSA commentary, but it's interesting to me that we get into BB Core and all of a sudden everybody's like, oh no, it it's clearly can't be one of these bats. It's got to be some hybrid or single piece alloy bat. As if something magical happens between the ages of 12 and 13 to 14 and 15 to where all of a sudden a big barrel, a light swing, a good feel, and good performance across the barrel, as if it no longer matters. All of a sudden we're all elite pro hitters that need single piece alloy bats. And anybody who says, well, Actually, a two-piece composite in BB Core makes a ton of sense. You sort of get booed off stage. Everybody's like, oh, no, no, no. These bats do just as fine. Well, that's, that's, that's true, I think, for good hitters. But I think the, 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 the more you're like trying to develop, the more you're not an elite hitter, I think the more these bats make sense. And nothing happens between the ages of 12 and 15. I know you're saying, well, puberty happens. Sure. But there's still, still players are still trying to get better at the age of 14 and 15. So these bats make a ton of sense for smaller, younger kids. We've proven that in USSA and USA. These are the bats that sell the best. These are the bats that people like the most. These are the bats that a lot of kids can do really well. Can they do good with these ones? Of course they can. But generally speaking, these bats tend to do really, really, really well. And then by the time we get to BB Core, they throw it out the window. They're like, oh no, we no longer need a big barrel and a light swing and a lot of plate coverage and a massive barrel. Like, we no longer need that. Seems weird. Uh, seems like uh, something weird is going on. Some alternate force is going on. We'll save that commentary for some other day. In any case, if I were you and I was thinking about how, how I want to buy a bat, the first step I would probably do is consider what kind of bat do I want? Do I need something that needs as much plate coverage as possible for as light a swing as possible that will give me the best feel as possible? If that is true, then you want to stay down here in these bats. You want a composite barrel or a hybrid bat. So that basically makes you stay down here. If you don't care too much about that stuff and you really want kind of a stiffer feel, um, a lot of power if you can find it and you swing really hard and you really don't care about having bells and whistles on your bat, and then I think these kinds of bats tend to make a lot of sense in the single piece alloy bat. So in, in the single piece alloy space. That's the general rule, I would say. You're, you're, a, you're gonna spend more money down here, but again, I, if, if you're serious about baseball and you're watching a video like this, I assume you're probably pretty serious about baseball, I would probably try to stay in this kind of range right here of these bats. Uh, that, again, that's my, that's, that's my two cents. But a, as you'll see, you, you get to make the decision for what bat works best for you, and this is a very helpful way, we think, of categorizing what kind of bat it is you actually want. If you want to hear more commentary about compression, you're welcome to go look at our BB Core bat video. Compression matters a little more in BB Core because there's a requirement that it must pass for a lot of NCAA tournaments. Uh, that is, the bat must be above a certain compression. It can't be too squishy of a barrel. There, there is no such, I mean, honestly, not that we know of, there's no such tournament in USSA that's doing compression on barrels. Some people like to think that a barrel that's more compressible means it's therefore more bouncy and therefore can hit the ball harder. I'm not sure it's it's not linear. Uh, we, again, we talked about this in the BB Core video, but just the, the short version is it's not as correlated as people hope that it is. You don't remove 500 points of compression on some random bat, and therefore it hits harder than another bat that has 500 more points of compression. Now, I would say per a given bat, that is probably true. It's why these absolute jokesters out there that are manipulating bats try to do things to make it actually more squishy. But of course, if it's more squishy, that's not the word. What's the word? More pliable? I don't know. 
then the bet is also more breakable. So there is obviously this sort of give and take that you want to deal with. In any case, some people like to see the compression numbers on U-Triple-S-A bats. The, the, uh, the other problem is, is that a lot of these bats are composite, unlike BB Core, meaning that the vast majority of sort of the high-end bats that people like in U-Triple-S-A are composite. And so th that compression does change over time because the bat does get worked in. So here's the compression on the drop 10 height fire. You put this bat all the way into the end, and then you set it, you, you clamp this down to zero, and then you pull it up, and you can actually see this number is like 400, which is crazy. If you do a lot of BB core, you're like 400. Holy cow, that's, 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 that's like a sponge. But BB core bats are like 1250 or over, composite bats maybe 1000, but most are like 1750. So this thing is like so, so compressible. But watch me move the bat just a little bit and I'll change the spot of the barrel that it presses down and you will see this number uh, change. Well, maybe not dramatically because it's already pretty small, but, but watch this. Right, so you set it down to zero. You can, it's not gonna focus, but I don't care. And then you pull that up and then you get this number, which again, you can see that number. It's a little about, what is that, about 400. But now watch this. So if I undo it, <coughs> bring it down. And let me just spin it a little bit and maybe pull it down maybe a half inch, maybe an inch, just for a little bit of a different spot of the barrel. And then again, I just, I set it back, I set it back on zero and then I pull the trigger and uh, it moved almost none. It moved like it moved like it moved like 25. So it's a little it's a little bit better, uh, meaning it's more compressible. That's just I'm looking at a different spot of the barrel. Let me let me try it again here. Spin it out. Maybe take it down an inch here. Pop it into the zero mark. Ciao. Uh, okay, that's a little above 400. So that's lame. Let me see if I can't. Make this even crazy. What if I, what if I go deeper by an inch or so? Set it at zero. Pull this thing down. Eh, that's, that, that looks that looks too obviously like I'm trying to cheat it. So let me do it like there. All right. Set it to zero. Pull that there. Okay. Uh, there we go. So maybe maybe I'm 25 or 30 off. What if I do it like at the end of the barrel? I just want to see what this looks like if I go way down here. Gets a little bit, gets a little more difficult to do. Um, if I put it, see, see where the barrel is now? I'm doing like the very, almost towards the end cap. Definitely harder. What happens if I put it on the end cap? I don't even know. I've never done that. Maybe I'm gonna break something here. Let's find out. And this is where I break my $3,000, or whatever this thing was, like 2,500 bucks compressor. Can you believe that? Like, I thought it was 2,500 bucks, I can't remember. Okay. I'm basically compressing like the end cap. Um, and you know, still, still pretty compressible. Um, What's that? What's that magic number at? Just barely over 500, maybe. Okay, now I just I've never done this before. I want to like the problem is you can't set it in here. What if I do way down here? Okay, I'm way I'm way down here, but I went backwards. Okay, I put it way in there and pulled it and it went negative. That doesn't make any sense. It's because this lever doesn't go all the way down. And so when you pull the lever here, it only pulls it a little bit and so clearly. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just screwing around with it. Anyways, fun, fun with bat gadgets. All right, let me go back to just the normal six inches. Pop it on there. Check this before you wreck this. And then magic number. A little under 500, kind of like where it's at, where it's been the entire the entire time. So compared to BB Core, there's not a ton of variation, at least according to the height, and that's a composite bat. What I want to do though is a metal bat. See, I'm I'm learning as I go too. I get I get to learn things, right? Uh, I'm gonna do a metal bat up there and see if I can get that one to change by a lot if I just sort of manipulate it. But right now, almost whatever I do, it's around between 400 and 500. If you watch our BB Core video, you'll see. The range was like 1750 to like 1200. I could get that just by moving the bat around a little bit. So let, let me do a metal bat. Let's see what happens. I'll do that. 
What metal bat should we do? Uh, Cat X? Yeah, let's do the Cat. Here's the Cat X, of course, the Cat X Vanta for 2024 is black. This is the same bat, just painted white. So again, I'm putting this one there correctly. So this is all the way down to the six inch mark. I set it at zero, I pull the trigger, and I get 550. So that means this bat is not as compressible maybe as the hype. Is that, uh, is that evidence that it hits it harder? I would say no, absolutely not. But you'll get to see that when you go to the exit speed section. But let me, just for fun, let me pull this down by maybe an inch or two. And let's see if I can't manipulate it like we did those BB core bats that just changed dramatically. That def definitely did definitely did change a little more. So it's now, now officially over 600. Um, now again, it looks looks better, but if you notice this bat here, it's just not all the way in. So I'm, I'm just compressing this part of the barrel. Um, I'm not, I'm no longer compressing like this part of the barrel, which, you know, they get, there's some change there. Let me also for fun, uh, let's do like really far down here, like the end cap. Well, not the end cap, but pretty close to the end cap. You're like the last inch of the barrel. Oh yeah, look at that. Ka-chow. Very, very, uh, very hard to compress. So in terms of the differences here, uh, clearly that composite height bat. Again, how much stock do we put into compression? I'm not sure, especially when the range is something like 400 down here for the Avenge Pro, all the way up to about 700 and about like the F5 that means that's the pressure on that device that, that we were showing you. But that's the range from about 400 up to about 700 at the end of this. Um, is that a super useful number to, to compare? I don't know, especially because the majority of these bats are composite and there is some change in that as they get worked in. Uh, not a lot, and I don't think enough to be like, oh my gosh, I now get, I can now hit the ball 450 versus 425. Like, no, I don't, I don't think you're gonna see that kind of change. Maybe four, five, 10 feet, maybe on a perfect hit, maybe, uh, but most of the time, we're not talking about that. I think the other thing that, that's maybe use, useful to point out, um, if we were to put these things in order, which we obviously just did for compression, is that the bats from there down to the F5 all the way up to, let's see, the cat, these are all these are all alloy bats. And then you have a couple of these bats, which honestly have not really been hit hard yet. That would be the Meta and the Zoa. And then you have another alloy bat, which is the Atlas. And then all the bats over here are composite. So clearly composites a lot more compressible than alloy. Does that translate into better exit speeds? Well, you'll get to see in the video, our general experience is not really, not really. So I wouldn't overstate or overemphasize compression or watch someone do the compression on a bat and say, therefore this bat is better. Eh, it just doesn't, doesn't seem to be that true. But in any case, that's your order for 2024. Uh, at least the bats that we have right here with different levels of being worked in. So that's compression. So that's, that's fascinating that we're finding Compared to BB core bats, you triple SA bats seem to be way more consistent, especially as I rotate them. As I look at different spots of the barrel, I would say in terms of compression, look, I think, I think just because we can measure it, should we? I, I, I don't know if, if, if we should, and then sort of tr trying to extrapolate this into how hot a bat actually is. Because the truth is, you can actually just measure how hot the bat is. You can just hit it. And the question is, is bats with a lower compression, do they hit the ball harder? Like, do they have better exit speeds? Well, that's something that we will measure, in fact. So, so look at these numbers that we're showing in terms of compression for you SSA bats. Go to the part of the video where we talk about exit speeds and see see for yourself. See, see if they actually correlate. Is there, is, there a, is there a compression to exit speed correlation if there is, great. Maybe you found some holy grail of figuring out which bat is quote unquote hot. I, I, I'll, I'll hold my, my commentary till the end, okay? Uh, but I, I feel like we already have an opinion about if compression means as much as we hope it does. And little secret, it doesn't. But you feel free to do that. Uh, the, the numbers are yours. This is the whole point of this video is for you to find data that you otherwise could not just sit in from your house trying to buy the right bat. And so there you go. We'll. Uh, uh, we'll keep we'll keep going on to the next after compression. We've spent considerable time measuring and and trying to find every little metric we can find in a bat to actually you know weigh it and and balance point it and length it out and price it out and type it out and hopefully you've been able to jump around and and look at those things that you find that were useful. 
again, do we think those are the end all be all of your bat purchasing decision? Of course not. Of course, ab absolutely not. That's that's not that's not our point. Our point is simply that the industry is the one that's telling you that the bat is different because they're saying it's better. That it's priced different. It's 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 marketed different. And so if the bat is in fact better, it has to be different. And if it's different, we should be able to measure some differences in it. And that's what we've sort of taken out to do. Did we find something useful to look at? For sure. We think type of bat is really useful. We think swing weight is super useful. Uh, th those are kinds of the things that we that we look at when we recommend bats for people, or we go out and buy our own bats for our own players. That's uh, That was super useful to us. Do we think barrel size and usable length of the bat and compression is useful? Eh, I don't know. Um, if all, all other things being equal, uh, it's possible that, that they could be useful, but turns out not all other things are, use, uh, are equal in most cases, but for you, they may be. All right, let's do some sound checks on these UAAA bats. What's the point of a sound check? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, alloy bats will sound like alloy, composite will sound like composite, but I think some people like to see it and get a feel for, you know, if they're out there about ready to buy it, what it might actually sound like. Does sound have any indication to uh, how well a bat performs? No, in fact, I think some bats are actually designed to have a certain sound that makes you think that it hits harder than it actually does. So take that for what it's worth. But in any case, this is a sound check of 2024 UAAA bats. Here we go. Uh, the blue bat sounds like this. Purple bat with this very weird shaped handle sounds like this. Blue and green bat, like this. The red bat, like this. One green bat, like this. The red and green bat, like this. Tan bat. Sounds like this. The green and blue and red bat. Purple, green. Blue and purple bat. Green and white bat. The black on black. Green and tan. Green and tan, that is. Orange. Dark blue. When you're trying to get exit speeds with young players, uh, we've learned it, it actually becomes super difficult because young players are if you're getting true live young players, it's actually pretty inconsistent just the way that they hit the ball. So if you're trying to get a lot of bats and you're trying to get them all in the same session with the same balls and the same pitch and the same day and the same feel and all that stuff to get real live exit speeds, we found that if you use live pitching, it becomes like impossible, especially if we're trying to get like 10 data on 10 to 15 bats. We want to get five or so good hits. I mean, you're going to be here for the rest of your life and the kid's arms are going to fall off before you actually get good data. So for us to do that, it seems to make more sense for us to get the data off of a T and feel off of a T. I realize that sort of loses a little bit of an element, um, and, but I'm not sure batting practice is much better than a T. It's not like it's game work anyways. So if we're trying to just measure exit speeds, we found that for younger players, especially you triple SA, it's more consistent. It feels like it's a little more honest data if we do it off of a T. So, um, if you want like the exclusive, all like swing speed, all that stuff, our website is a place to go. Go to the members.batdigest site. But so, if you're wondering sort of our methodology and our thinking, that's it. When you get to BB core hitters and they're better and more consistent, 
going off machine is, it seems to be a little more consistent because they can be consistent. But when you got a 10, 11 year old in here trying to hit, you know, pitches off of, of a mic arm, it's just super inconsistent and their arms fall off before you get any data anyway. So anyways, for, for what it's worth, there's our intro to exit speeds for 2024 U SSSA bats. Feels metallic -y. Metallic -y? Like, oh. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay. Probably give it like, uh, say, three point seven five. You have n any idea what this is? Nope. No idea. No idea what this bat is, huh? No idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We need a baseball. Yep. I guess I'm that guy. I'm I'm slacking. Uh, give it a rating. One out of five in terms of feel. Um, like, uh, kind of the same as the last one, the three point three point five. Three point five. You're not gonna do whole numbers on me. You're gonna you're gonna jump yep. into points. It's like a connect because of this. Okay, looks like a connect. This is actually the purple and blue bat, as we're calling it. Feels metally. You can see a little bit of red. Oh, you're trying to cheat it. Yeah. You're trying to cheat it. All right. Ooh, uh, felt like a composite. That's definitely, I mean, for what, it, just so you know, that's not composite. That's metal. That loud ping sound? No, you're fine. You're, you're not supposed to know what that is. <laughs> oppo top. Okay. That. Average feeling so far. Um, felt pretty nice. So I'll give it a three point seven five. Like it. Also kind of seems like a Zoa. Okay. Because of this metal piece right here. I like it. Let's just see how it does. Really good. Three point. Uh, three point five out of ten. Three point five out of ten. Okay, so seven out of ten. Three point five out of five. We're gonna stay on the five scale. Any guesses in the history of the world if that's a, if that's a what that that is? No, I have no clue. Uh, 
It uh, feels hollow because it's very light. It feels hollow. I think I think all the bats are hollow, but yeah, I'm with you. Probably. Mm. Does it feel aluminum? Does it sound aluminum or composite? Don't. So, it sounded kind of composite. I think. No. Did it sound like it was wood that was being hit, or did it sound like it was a piece of metal? Piece of metal. So that would be not composite. Right. That'd be the opposite of composite. Composite's like a plastic. So now you know. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think you're right. I think that is a single piece alloy bat with a light swing. Light blue bat, little heavy, he says. Also probably gonna give this one like a four. Looks like a ZOA. Looks like a ZOA. Just because of this. Did you use the ZOA last year at all? Like, same with most of the others, a 3.75, just a little better. <laughs> okay. Do you know what bat that is? It says F. Don't know what the it other It says F. <laughs> okay, cool. It's like, the F like bat. An F5 or something Ooh, like that. maybe. Maybe you're onto something there. Uh Sweet. Slap the crap out of them. Any ideas yeah. what it might be? An axe. An probably. axe bat. Why do you think it's an axe bat? Because I had one of these. You did have one of those. Yeah. And any other reasons? Like, how do you know that's an axe bat? The knob. Oh, yeah. The knob is weird. For the grip, and you're holding it the right way and everything. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not one of those pro axes because they hold it backwards all the time. So. Probably. A three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your. This one feels pretty light. That. Uh. Kind of felt some drag. what bat that is no all right uh what's your rating i will give it uh 3.5 like all the others uh three point Hey man, good looking swing. What, what was your swing speed on that? 58. 58. Uh, if you were to rate how that bat feels on a scale from, let's just say like one to five. W um, one being like it didn't feel very good, five felt, man, it felt great, what would you do it? Like a four. That is what that bat is? Like always, looks exactly like the Zoa. <laughs> it's, it's the Zoa. Every bat, that's what we did to you. We put every bat in here as a Zoa. Let's see what you can do with the uh, quote unquote Zoa.
felt pretty nice, so I will probably give it like a uh, four. Okay, man, this is your moment of truth. Do you have any idea what these top three bats are that you rated? No. No, no, no guesses at all? No. If you, so talk us through your thinking a little bit. Why did you put them in this order? Why does this number one get number one? Probably because of the feeling, like when you hit the ball. It's a feeling, a sense of feeling. You haven't looked at like your exit speeds or anything just yet, right? No. You don't know what bat you hit the hardest. No. Nope. But this is the order you put them in. Mm-hmm. What bat do you think, what bat do you hope did the best of all the bats you know? Um, all the bats I know. It's like from pure marketing. Like what bat do you think is the best? Is it the best? Yeah. Well, everyone says the hype. It's probably the best. Everyone says the hype is probably the best. Do you think your the hype is up here at all? Um, I hope so. You hope so? No. Yeah. It's a good bat. It's a good bat. Do you want me to show you where the hype is? Sure. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad. I don't want to talk bad about the hype, but I'm gonna grab the hype for you. Ready? Thanks. Wow. <laughs> Is this the uh, new one? Uh, that, that's the... Wow, hype fire. That makes sense. Why does that make sense? I thought you said it was going to be awesome. Yeah, you rated it, it the awesome. bottom third, man. Number three. It's probably because um, once you get... Like, if you hit it in any other spot when I uh, tested it earlier, then mm. you might be gaming speed. Uh, um, you know, if you hit it in the wrong spot, it doesn't really do as well. But it's not a bad bat. You said they're all good, right? Yeah. They all have some they're value. Pretty good. But legit, you rank, you rank the bat. You thought, and this is exactly why we do blind bat testing, folks. This is exactly it. Because people can't get over their bias. They can't do it. Um, and so I think he's, he's pretty shocked. It is the red one, I, I hope. That'd be funny if it wasn't. And I go back and look. But uh, I thought I looked before this. Okay, uh, number one. Any idea what this bat is right here? You're, the bat you like the most is called the Louisville Slugger Meta. Ever heard of it? No, not at all. That's the meta. Uh, beautiful bat, two-piece composite, a lot like a lot like the hype, honestly. It has a big barrel, light swing, but apparently you liked it the best. I would be, as a dad, I'd be perfectly happy buying you that bat. You're like, that's a great pick. Light swing, big barrel, drop 10, just what you need. Number two, ready? Bat number two, uh, an all-time favorite. Number two, this is why I love you as, as my son. Uh, you picked the $119 bat. You picked the cheapest bat in there. $119 Marucci F5. That was your second favorite bat of all those. Pretty sure the, the first bat you guys ever got me was an F5. That's right, when you were like eight. Yeah. When you were like eight, we got you the 2818 or something like that. Thing's still dented in the garage. It is still <laughs> dented in the garage. True that, man. And number three, the bat number three you picked, oh. that is the 2024 Louisville Slugger. Actually, 23 Louisville Slugger is Atlas. The one we couldn't find? Nope, that's the vibe we can't find. I, don't know, I still don't know where that stupid thing is from Marucci, but that is the Atlas. So two Louisville Sluggers, one Marucci. All right, Carson, you've been, you've been banging away, dude. You ever hit this many bats in your life? Um, and, and you're not really a bat connoisseur, you know? Like, you just play baseball. You don't care. You're, I feel like you are, like, a great representation of most kids who are trying to buy bats. Like, you like playing. You're a 10 year old. I think your swing is like so quiet. It's, I, I think it's beautiful. I love it. I love your swing. So, and you don't, know, you don't know like high end expensive bats, which is great. So you just put these bats down here in the order you like them from left to right. This bat here, I mean, do I even tell you what these bats are? This bat's from Louisville Slugger. It's called a Meta. Ever heard of it before? Now you have two piece composite, fat barrel, light swing. Uh, love that bat, big fans. I messed up. This is the Atlas, dude. Tap the Atlas. There you go. This is Atlas. That's the Slugger Atlas. That's the Maxim. I'm sorry. See how much bigger, different the barrel is? The size of the barrel. This one's composite. This one's alloy. So you chose Louisville Slugger Meta, Louisville Slugger Atlas, and then the, uh, the Maxim as your favorite bats. This bat right here that you rank fourth, mm -hmm. this $120 bat called the Marucci F5. Lovely bat. One of my favorites. All right. All right, dude, this is your order, right? Yeah. From, from what you thought you liked the most to what you thought maybe you liked the least. Is that right? Oh, we forgot yeah. this. We forgot this guy over here, right? 
uh, tell me how you decide, like, how did you decide your order? You, you hit it, you didn't see your exit speed, but why did you decide that the blue and red bat, or the, the blue and green bat is the first and the, this bat is the, need, the least first? Well, this one had like a bigger sweet spot, it felt like. Okay. But that one just sucked. Okay, this one sucked, this one felt like it had a bigger sweet spot. And that's pretty much everything in between, right? So, uh, do you have a feel for what this bat is? Do you know, can you guess? What would, what, would be, what would be your hope that that bat is? What, what was your number one hope? What was your bat? That was your number one hope bat. Cadex. The Cadex, which one? Uh, composite. Good, good job. That's the Cadex Composite. That's the Cadex Composite Vanta. That's the black version of that bat. So that's the new version of that bat. So good job. You did it. You chose the best. You chose the bat you hoped was the best. You willed it to the top. The next bat, do you have any guesses what that is? The red one? Huge barrel. It is actually two piece. You can barely tell, but you gotta look close. And if you hold it up to the light, you can see what bat it is. Do you see what bat it oh, is? Oh yeah, that's the hype fire. Yeah, that's the hype. So that was number two. And number three, this is the Cadex Connect. So that's the alloy version of that bat, right? So that's, that's metal. There you go. So in terms of exit speeds, there's a couple ways to think about it. One, we can take the average that he had of, of his best five hits. We had him hit the bats multiple times. We took his best five hits, um, and then we take an average of that. We also can take the top of those, so like the best hit basically that he had. Um, if you were to take the best three bats, then the industry just, just hates us. I don't know what else to say, but the very best bat that he hit the hardest at like 58 something miles an hour was the String King, $120 probably. The second best bat he hit the hardest, which was just right under there like 58.3 miles an hour was the F5. Of course, it's the F5. Now the third best bat that he hit the hardest was the Rawlings Icon. There you go, now you can spend some money and feel good about buying the best bat. I don't know what to tell you. This is why the industry hates us. Uh, they're not gonna send this video out in any links and tell you all about how hot this bat was because they're not, that, they're not that excited about saying the String King was the quote unquote hottest. Now that is the top bat. Uh, so that's these three guys right here. Did you even focus on those? That's those three guys right there. Those were his top three in terms of his, his top exit speed. Now I'll put them in averages and people might get a little, little happier about those and be more willing to spend money. Okay, so if we were to take the average of the top five hits, which honestly, that's probably what we would do in terms of exit speeds. Uh, if we're trying to find the bat that has the best exit speed. But please realize this. You're talking about a difference between like 55 and like 52. So between these 15 U-Triple-S-A bats we talked about, the difference is a whopping three miles an hour. The margin of error on a hit tracks or on Rapsodo, whatever you use, is already plus or minus one, which is a gap of two miles an hour. So if we're talking about a difference between the best and the worst is a total of three miles an hour. And I'm about to show you the ones that are quote unquote the top. I, I just don't think it's very fair to be like, these are the best, but people want to see, they, you have to see it. And I think it's worth, worth seeing that again, of the top three U-Triple-S-A bats for this particular hitter, you saw them hit, they're in like high 50s. Well, welcome to real life, like Little League Baseball. This is where the kids are. Number one bat was the Rawlings Icon at like 55 miles an hour. Number two bat, the Marucci F5. Man, that bat's been all over the place for this kid. And then the number three bat, is the Easton Maxim from 2022 or 23, that really big barrel bat that I think you can, you can generally find out there. Uh, okay, dude, you rated all the bats you liked by how they felt, right? You put your order. We got your max exit speed. We got your average exit speed. I took all those numbers and added them up and based them on the rank. And then I gave you basically an overall, overall score. That, these are the three bats right here that were your first, second, and third place. Uh, this bat, it's like the hardest thing for me. To, this is the Maxim. This is that single piece composite bat. It's massive, massive barrel, mid swing, $299. This one here, also a 2023 bat called the DeMarini CF. You ever heard of the CF before? CF's a monster, dude. People have been loving the CF for the longest time. That's that tan bat. See how there's two pieces here, by the way? They call this a two piece bat. So it's made, they make the barrel and the handle at different times and then they connect it with this two-piece bat. What that means is that they can sell it to you for more. That's what it means. It's more expensive. But you, but, but you like that bat. And this is your winner, dude. This is your winner. That was the Maxim. Black one is the Atlas. 
Louisville Slugger, 2024. What a deal. Are you convinced for Christmas now? Yeah. That's the bat you want? Which <laughs> You have no idea. You can't, even see, you can't even see the colors. Would you choose the bat on the colors or on how well it did? Oh, uh, how well it did. Okay, great. If I were you then, I'd probably choose that Atlas right there. Or that CF or that Maxim. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, if I take the max exit speeds, that is to say the bats you hit the hardest, it goes green, purple, black. Any guesses in the world what this bat is? I'd be shocked if you know what bat that was. Huge barrel, lights like mid-swing. Uh, it's not two-piece, though. Maximum. That's the Easton Maxim, yep. That's a great bat. That's the bat you hit the hardest. Any guesses what this bat is? It's an axe bat. It's an axe. You know which version of the axe bat that is? No clue. That's the Strato. 199 bucks. It's a deal. It's a deal. Any ideas what this bat is? This is number three. People are going to love that you chose this one. People love this bat. No. That's the Louisville Slugger Atlas. Single piece, middle swing like you like, not composite, not two piece, but massive barrel, like huge barrel for an Atlas or for, for an for a alloy. All right. Does that, did that change your mind? Uh, you still want the composite? Composites don't have as much pop, but I feel like you can make better contact with them. Okay. Okay. I like the thinking there. You know what bat you did the worst with in terms of max exit speed? Your favorite. This is your lowest max exit speed. I mean, granted, it's only like a mile an hour difference or maybe like two miles an hour different. But does that change your mind at all? Tiny bit. Tiny bit? All right, dude. Thanks for coming and hitting. Okay, you came to this video to watch to find the best bat. That's what everybody wants. They, they just want to tell me what the best one is, which one's going to give us the most pop, which one's going to feel the best and be priced the right, all, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, we've, we've shown you over the last several minutes that there is no such thing, right? The, the best bat is not some... some the best bat is not one that someone else can hit the hardest. And maybe more importantly than that, the best bat is a lot of different bats. There are actually a lot of really good options. Now that said, if we were to take player feedback, exit speeds, price, swing weight, barrel size, for us, if we had to choose a best bat realizing that we're like, we don't, we don't like, but we do, because that's what people want to know. A 2024 best USSSA bat for us, because it ranks well on exit speeds and everything. In fact, player feedback wise, when we take the average player feedback, this bat had the highest ratings across the board. Not, not necessarily the number one for each player, but on average for each of the players, it's this bad boy right here, this taped in black, it's beautiful. Uh, actually the black on black bat, the 2024 single piece alloy about what, is it 249? How much is the Louisville Slugger Atlas? Somebody remind me, I don't know what it is. That's it, folks. I guess that's the bat we choose as the winner of our little measurement thing. It seems to come in well all the time. Kids like how it feels. It swings light. It has a really big barrel for an alloy bat. Uh, it, it also hits the ball really hard. Honestly, kids have had a lot of success hitting this ball. It's always in the top echelon. In fact, it was, on average, it was the bat the kids hit the hardest. It was also the bat the kids liked the most. It also has a massive barrel, has a light swing, has a reasonable price point. I don't know. It kind of checks all the boxes for us. So, if you made us choose the best U bat for 2024, we would we would say it is the Atlas. We think it works for the most kids most of the time. There you go. If we wanted to choose a two-piece composite bat, which a lot of people do because they want that big barrel, light swing, uh, great feel, then our 2024 pick would be, based on the data we collected, based on some, some barrel sizes that we think we, we kind of we judge a little bit higher, and based on feedback from the players and the exit speeds, we choose this guy right here. Can you tell what it is? It's the old green, blue, and red bat. That would be the 2024 Rawlings Icon. Oh my gosh, why didn't he choose the Hype Fire? Isn't that bat so amazing? I, I've heard so much. Look, Hype Fire, Rawlings Icon, they both price the same. Uh, barrel, barrels are about the same. Generally, our feedback from our players, in fact, there wasn't a single player who rated the feel, the, the blind bat feel of the Hype Fire above the Rawlings Icon. Everyone rated this one better. It also did a little bit better in exit speeds. 
and there you go. And so do we think there's a massive difference between those two bats? Eh, not really. Uh, do we think the kids generally like the feel of the hype fire or of the Rawlings icon more than the hype fire? We do, we do actually. And since they're the same price, it's really hard for us to convince ourselves to go out and to buy a bat like the the Meta or uh, the Cadex Composite, which are which are significantly more expensive. So we think the Rowling Icon is an absolute win. If you bought the Hype Fire, we wouldn't be mad at you. But don't don't think that the Hype Fire has some crazy exit speed advantage over other bats. It re it really doesn't. Like I said, in the exit speed test, the Icon actually did better. I think when you're talking about kids who actually only hit the ball between 50 and maybe 60 miles an hour, because that's what an actual U Triple S A player is that any sort of magic composite advantage there might be, um, I, I just don't think it exists. I don't think it exists. And if it does, it's, it's on the margin. And if, if we've proved anything, it's that the Rawlings Icon is actually hotter than the Hype Fire. Now, that said, don't, don't get too excited either way and act like we're, we're trying to dog on the Hype Fire. Perfectly reasonable bat. At 350 bucks, we're in love with that price point for a two-piece composite bat, especially if you look at bats like the Meta, which we love, uh, and the Composite, which we also love. That is the, the Cat X Composite. But those bats are 400 bucks. So poo-poo on you guys for trying to sell me a little kid bat for $400. We'll take the $350 bat all day long and y'all can stick it. Y'all can take your $420 uh, two-piece composite bat and you can put it on the shelf and repaint it next year and sell it for $50 less and then I will buy it. But until then, if I need to buy a brand new 2024 two-piece composite bat, I'm gonna go with the Rawlings Icon or as we like to call it, the green, blue, and red bat. Okay, our award, at least as today, if you want to call it award, for value bat for 2024. If you're looking for just the best value, like you don't want to spend a ton of money, uh, you, you, you want a bat that can hit it well, that feels good, uh, there's really two options, but the one that keeps rising to the top, and we sound like a broken record, if you ever listen to our, you know, if you ever follow us on social media or, or look at our website, but man, we just love, we just love the old pink and green bat in USSA. We love it in BB Core as well, as well as in USA. But this, my friends, is the 2024 Marucci F5. Of course, it's the best value bat. I don't even know how much this bat is right now. It's $120 single piece, hits the ball just as hard. In fact, in our exit speed test, it ranked out like number four, uh, depending on how you look, they look at top or, or average, but it's like four or five, it's right in there. The kids ranked it actually really high. In fact, overall ranking, so if we took average exit speed, max exit speed, and the kids' actual feedback on the bat, this was our third best bat. So third best bat for 120 bucks, brand new in wrapper. I mean, it's really, really hard to go wrong with the Marucci F5. If you want a value bat, don't want to spend a ton, maybe maybe more entry-level stuff, but we even hate calling entry-level because we think a kid who's really good will do really, really good with the F5. Being able to get max exit speeds on a great price bat and a single piece alloy that feels pretty good for being a single piece alloy. Do note that it does run a little heavy. So I wouldn't go out and buy uh, a, an inch up for this. I would definitely stay in the size he's supposed to be, but do that. And I think you'll love our 2024 value pick, at least for today. This stuff will always change. So keep looking on our website, but that's where we're at, F5. We don't want to call this bat our runner up, but we definitely like this bat a lot. And the reason we don't put it as our best bat is because it's just not as widely available and they're really not making it anymore. Uh, we, we would love to see them bring it back, but unfortunately I don't, I don't know that it might ever be. And I don't want to create some run on the market either, but honestly, folks, this bat, the old lime green bat, the 2023 or 22, whatever we're going to call it, Easton Maxim Ultra, huge barrel, light swing, great feel. In terms of exit speeds and player feedback, uh, this is number two. Like it's number two. It's right, it's right there. It's right there behind the Atlas. And we like the idea that it's composite because we think composite actually feels better for kids. It doesn't give you as much ring. A lot of our hitting was done off of the T as we talked about earlier because we're trying to just be super consistent. We think the two piece or, or we think the single piece composite actually has a lot of flex in it even though it's not officially two piece. And in addition to that, these days, you can generally find this bat for less than what it originally was like 300 bucks. But you know, we, we just looked around right here and found it for like 200, $250. Uh, of course, we are actually big fans of buying things. If you're gonna buy a gray market bat, buy it used. Go to, a, go to eBay or Sideline Swap, buy it like, just buy it used, you know what you're getting. Don't try to buy some like 
hokey pokey weird place because we, we think you'll be disappointed. Uh, that said, there are still legit outlets that have these bats, U-Triple-S-A in stock, but this is the 3020 version of it and kids absolutely loved it. They banged with it. They thought it was great. And like I said, in terms of all of our metrics in, in, the, in the lab with kids hitting, it ranked our second best bat behind the Atlas. And honestly, it was like this close. And the fact is right now you can get this bat cheaper than you can get the Atlas for. Who knows how long that will last and how long inventory lasts. But in terms of our sort of our secret backup uh, pick that we would for sure take a very close look at. We love the 2023 Maxim Ultra. I, I do this because there was a 22 version and like a 21 version, and they really haven't changed the bat since they took it over from combat. It's all kind of been the same, but we're, we're in love with this bat. And if you can find it in almost any year, uh, even honestly going back to those combat bats, that's the kind of vibe you're going to pick up with our runner up. Uh, I don't know, whatever we're going to call it, 2024 U-Triple-S-A pick. So as we said in the beginning, we, we often get accused of measuring like things that don't matter. In our defense, as we often say, it's not, it's not us saying the bats are, are different. It's you saying the bats are different industry. You're the one saying your bat is best. I, I don't know that uh, the bat is any better. I don't know that it is any different. The only way I can figure out if it's different is if I just measure, are there actual differences? And so we spent the last, for us, like three weeks. For you, uh, just a matter of, I don't know how long was the video, maybe an hour or so, something like that. Uh, hopefully you found some useful and interesting things for you to find out what bat is in fact better for you. Are the differences that we measured useful for your purchase? Well, I don't know. That's, that's your decision to make, not my decision to make. All we can do is measure the differences and report them. And then you folks get to decide, Hey, is that, is that worth it for me? We're hopeful that you, we're hopeful you found some difference um, that was useful. And if not, all the things being equal, shut down the computers, turn these bad boys off, grab the keys. And so it is, you know, all other things being equal, spend less money, right? Why, why, why spend more money or not? Uh, and just have fun with it and enjoy the process. And welcome to, uh, oh, it's always so bright out here. So we, uh, we hope that was useful, folks. 2024 U-Triple-S-A bats. Good times. Peace out.